Hello, my lovely people. It's your Dunder Bender Prophet Jess coming at you with a weekly forecast for what's the date? It's got to be the 14th because it was the seventh the last time. So for September 14th in 2020, uh, if you would like to support the channel, please hit the like button or the share button or the subscribe. It is a very simple way for an energetic exchange. You can also leave a tip if you feel so inclined for free videos such as these. The link for my PayPal and Venmo will be down below in the information box, along with descriptions and pricings for personal services, which you can also obtain. And uh, you can join me on Facebook and Instagram for free daily card pulls and uh, you can also buy my book I wrote down my story and uh, in some thought seeds and that's available uh, print by order or ebook on Amazon in most places of the world I do have a batch of author copies in my home so if you want a signed personalized copy please reach out to me via Facebook Instagram or email which will be down below as well Okay, let's get to business. So this week I am using the Ravens Oracle by Stephen Hutton. And honestly, like when I first was getting acquainted with this deck and the artwork, I was like, oh, this person loves women. <laughs> so thank you, Stephen, for being a, f a fellow feminist. And then I'm also using the, oh, I don't have the top of it. Yes, I do. The Nature Nurture by Marcella Crawl two of my new decks. All right, so for this week, I already did the shuffling. Um, I'm not sorry. Sometimes I like to do it live, but it also distracts me a little bit and I, I like to get an idea before I come on in. So for the tone, we have Sweet Temptation with Nurture. So the Sweet Temptation card, Coral with Nurture. Well, let's start with nur the, this Nurture card. Coral is alive. It is essential to providing a lot of life in the ocean, both at the edge of reefs and deeper, all right? Uh, it, it's it's kind of like an apex predator where without this in the world, the world would not function so well. And um, this sweet temptation is saying that it's okay to take care of yourself first before you take care of everyone else. So the story behind the card in the pamphlet is really sweet. Uh, this elder sends the younger Fay to go out and collect for a pie. And while they do, the kids are like, oh my God, this is, look at these berries. And they start eating and they're like, oh my God, this is so sweet. And then the, the elder comes to check and she's like, come on guys, what are you, what are you doing? And then they collect and, and, are able to make the pie. It's very cute. But the, 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 the point being here, you know, don't forget your people, but also very much keep in mind that it's okay to indulge in yourself first. Don't just nurture other people. Don't just nurture outside of yourself, nurture within nurture, put yourself first. Um, very, very royal energy, very put on your crown, uh, because you cannot make sure that other people are not starving if you yourself are also starving. You cannot sacrifice yourself to such a point where, um, you can, you, seriously, you cannot help others if you do not help yourself first. You won't have the energy to. Um... Yeah, so very much like I'm taking care of me so that I can take care of others. Very good energy. So in the beginning of the week, uh, very bird energy because we have the uh, spread your wings. And we have the owl with the seer. So these both are about taking up that space, seeing the truth, knowing yourself. This uh, So in the beginning of the week, the collective, the veil is sort of thin. Um, as the energies go, as I am being clairsentient and, and feeling as the web of collective consciousness, which is not just humanity, but all beings, not just of this earth, but also celestial. So there's a, a message, message about, uh, being able to perceive others by their behavior, hearing their vocal inflections, noticing their body language. And, um, also you might be 
seeing yourself, how you hold yourself. You might hear the way you speak the words and notice how your body is telling more truth than you have, uh, than your ego has, I should say. Uh, so this seer is about change and it's about acute observation and it's also about um, seeing the truth behind the lies. I heard that very clearly, seeing the truth behind the lies. This could also spark a pandemic of like conspiracy theory when it comes to uh, the 1%, the elite, the, the government, all that jazz. Um, just know that there are multiple, multiple truths. And the beginning of the week is really more of an opportunity to reflect, to, to see the world so that you can see yourself better, and and take it as fuel to move forward lovingly and that spread your wings i'm sensing a lot of opportunity here but the sensation that i'm getting is about taking up that space this is um is that a seagull or is that an albatross i'm curious because my my the inkling that like the whole spread your wing take up space the albatross has like ridiculously big wings to to be able to just fly across oceans like non-stop um so hold up here i just wanna uh the great ocean bird okay it doesn't say one or way or another. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and for the sake of the sensation, go ahead and say it's the albatross. So really take up space, really catch the winds underneath you and really soar. Uh, it is action-based, but it's, it's almost effortless because the cosmos will be pushing us we will see the reasoning behind. We will see the support we have. We will see the movement of the cosmos that give us strength and motivation. And all we're doing is casting our sails to what we know to be true. So that it can carry us forward. So with that burst of energy of like action-based... Um, taking up space in the middle of the week it's like we will have earned um or or we will have ch achieved a new layer of ascension so we spread our wings we achieved we we rode the wings we gained new ground we we gained new height and so we can take in that perspective we can survey the land from that area we can dream we, this is that stillness, the power of stillness. It's almost um, high priestess energy where you don't need to do that movement uh, and uh, that life is a pulse, right? Up and down and then a rest, up and down and then a rest, up and down and then a rest. So it's like um, after this movement comes a period of rest where you can manifest and co-create and dream and enjoy the spoils of your past efforts. Um, or, no, that's a good way of saying it, but it's whatever karmic wraparound happens, just know that you co-created this. And it's one of those beautiful moments of manifestation where you get to see what you've done and you get to know your power and you get to revel in it, bask in it and, and magnify it. I bumped my computer. So it's, um... It's multi-layered, this receptivity and this using the energy to feed certain emotions and, and calibrate into the frequency you want to see more of. Allow in more love, allow in more abundance, allow in more path of least resistance, ease. By taking a moment to feel it all in the moment. And I have a feeling like the collective is going to be given an opportunity to put up your feet, relax, breathe, 
and receive. Beautiful. At the end of the week, mistakes teach us. And it's funny how I was just talking about the pulse being an up and down and then a line, up and down and then a rest, up and down and then a rest, because life is a zigzag and a spiral. We're not supposed to have like that smooth sailing upward progress. No, it is a ginormous mess accompanied with that journey card. Sorry about the glare. The lighting is, uh, I like it better in the morning. So mistakes teach us and we are appreciating our stories. We are appreciating what we have learned up until this point. Because without making those mistakes, we would not have learned those lessons, which are gems to carry with us and through this maze. Now, I'm being guided. I saw myself reading both pamphlets because they are new, but these um, the creators of these decks are channelers in their own right. So let's start with Journey. with Marcella Crawl journey. It's excited. Okay, sacred journey, spiritual quest, life review and inventory. The time is ripe for a spiritual adventure. Drawing this card can indicate a time to take stock and recognize your life's journey thus far, which we were talking about mistakes teach us, right? Go over and review the places you've been. So. I'm, I, I just saw people reading a book, but their book is their own life. And so we cannot read the future. That is the point of the present moment, reading each word as we go. But it's appreciating the plot of our personal stories and being very interested as to where it will lead. So that's a gorgeous, gorgeous message. Go over and review the places you've been, the things you've seen, the people you've met, and the lessons you've learned. As you inventory your life's adventures, be prepared to energetically let them go, right? Because we don't want to cling on to anything. Moving forward from this moment on, you are the sum of your experiences, but you are not betrothed to them. This labyrinth is here, to, here for you to go deeper, to release the past, to invent the present, that's very important, we have a little fail in my ear, to invent the present and gifts of the universe. Oh, in invite, <laughs> sorry, invent, I said that twice, to invite the present and the gifts of the universe. Uh, but I don't think that that was a mistake. Invent and invite are the same thing because when you invite, you allow, when you allow, you co-create and they're the same thing, okay? So let's read Mistakes Teach Us. What's up? What's up? whoever's sitting right by my ear, they say it's basically the same thing. But I'm also feeling guides from others saying like trigger words and such. So here we go. As one of the Wildwoods senior witches, Lana Zuri watches the coven's youngest learn to mount and fly a lightning staff. The inexperienced witches will fall many times and likely learn, pl likely earn plenty of bruises, but mistakes are good. Without mistakes, we would not progress. Each time a young witch falls, Lana resists the urge to fuss over them. We don't want to be coddled. The universe does not coddle. Lana resists the urge to fuss over them, knowing they will have to make it take a few knocks in order to find independence. The same is true for our own loved ones. Our dreams, plans, hopes for them have to be robust enough to take a few hits, Otherwise, when a really strong gust comes along, they'll be ill-prepared, you know? And when we see ourselves as the inexperienced, when we see ourselves as the children of the powers that be, the more willing we are to, you know, go through those experiences. And I'm also sensing an ability to put our story to use so, um, do, again, that message of like, don't get attached to anything because both of those cards mention something along those lines. Don't get attached to anything, but do be willing to share your experiences with another person so that they may absorb a different perspective, 
into their own way of being, and if nothing else, have something to look back on in retrospective and in, in retrospect and go like, oh, so that's that's kind of what that was. Really beautiful, really, really beautiful. It almost feels as though like the tone is almost like separate. Like, 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 like there's a whole several layers, like there's a whole scope of experience to be coming this week and it's to help us grow and challenge ourselves. <laughs> and, um, empower ourselves. Good luck. Spread your wings. Okay, cool. There it is, my lovelies. Take care, Rock on. I love you for loving yourself. You know where to find me.